On January 8, 1993, police in Palatine, Illinois, a city 35 miles north of Chicago, received a call from concerned parents that their son, Michael Castro, had not come home from working his shift at Brown's Chicken and Pasta, which at the time was located at 168 West Northwest Highway. When police arrived, they noticed a car was still in the parking lot and that the rear door to the restaurant was open. When they looked inside, they announced themselves, and nobody answered. Combing through the restaurant with guns drawn, one of the officers opened up a walk-in cooler and made a jarring discovery. Five bodies, some face up, some face down, all dead. The other officer going into a second cooler discovered two more bodies. They were all later identified as Richard and Lynn Elenfeld, who were the owners of the restaurant and five of their employees, Guadalupe Maldonado, Michael Castro, Rico Solis, Thomas Menes, and Marcus Nelson. During the investigation at the crime scene, one of the investigators saw that a four-piece chicken meal with fries, coleslaw, and a drink had been purchased at 9.08 p.m. from one of the registers. Looking further, she noticed that although the trash can on one side of the restaurant had a new trash bag in it, inside was a cardboard box with four pieces of chicken, scattered french fries, biscuits, coleslaw, paper products, and other chicken parts and bones. The trash contained the remnants of what looked like the same meal purchased at 9.08 p.m. Detectives had the foresight to take the leftover chicken from the trash can near the murder scene and kept the evidence in the police freezer. Now, it is important to know that DNA evidence to solve crimes was still in its early stages. Therefore, whatever DNA that would have been found on the food and the garbage would not be able to be tracked down through the person responsible for the crime. No camera footage was available, no fingerprints of any suspect were found, and it appears that whomever was involved took a mop to clean up any footprints that were made. Virtually, there were no clues, and in the ensuing nine years, the finger pointing began, with Palatine police being accused of being inept and contaminating the crime scene, and family members of the victims asking if enough was being done. False lead after false lead plagued the investigation. But Ann Lockett would finally put an end to all of that in March of 2002, when she contacted detectives with a story to tell. On January 8, 1993, she was in a hospital following a mental health episode, and as she was in the psych ward, her boyfriend at the time, James Degorski, called her and told her to, quote, Watch the evening news. I've done something, unquote. Later, him and his friend Juan Luna told her that Luna wanted to kill someone, so they had gone to Juan's old job, Brown's Chicken, and killed everyone there. Degorski told her if she ever told anyone, he would kill her too. Police found Juan Luna and James Degorski and asked them to submit their DNA for analysis. Possibly thinking it would seem suspicious if they refused the test, they agreed. The DNA from Luna matched the chicken bones found at the scene nine years earlier. Luna had even been questioned before, just after the murders happened, but had an alibi at the time. Faced with the DNA evidence, both eventually confessed to the murders. Luna and Degorski were tried separately, and the prosecutors were seeking the death penalty for both individuals. On May 10, 2007, Juan Luna was found guilty on all counts. The following trial of James Degorski, which ended September 29th of 2009, resulted in the same conviction. Both guilty on seven counts of murder. However, they were both sentenced to life in prison, after both juries could not come to a unanimous decision on imposing the death penalty. And here we are, always at the scene of the crime. We're in Palatine, Illinois, about 20 minutes north of Chicago. And right in front of me 
is a Chase Bank. And this was the location of where those murders occurred. This is where Brown's Chicken used to be. They tore down the restaurant in 2001 and then this land was just vacant for about a decade or so. And then they built this Chase Branch. For $2,000, you murdered all those people. Pathetically senseless. You know, there is a hell for people like that, I tell you. Here is but one of the graves of the many victims of that horrible crime. Uh, this is Thomas Menace. Uh. Rest in peace to Thomas and uh, the rest of the victims of that uh, horrible, horrible uh, crime. Those people did not have to be brutally murdered the way they were. Alright guys. I am out of here. I'm hitting the road. I am taking off out of uh, the area. I'll catch up with you on the next one guys. I hope to see you there. God bless. Peace out.